In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create these nice borders at the sides here. We will make it all around here, but afterwards we also focus on the top border here and on the right side. So let's start to work on this. So let's look how we can add the grid border in the chart in Chart.js. So the first thing what we need to do is go to Chart.js3.com and it's specifically here to getting started. In here, if you scroll down here, you'll see here a chunk of code and that is our default code that we need. So let's copy this chunk of code. And once we have that, I'm going to just paste that in there and then I will cut out the title, put that in there. All right. So if I save this, and by the way, if you want to understand what this code here does, make sure you watch this video here that explains it all. But if I refresh now, you can see here now we have just a basic bar chart. And what I want to focus on is to create a grid border. So to do this, we must use basically a customized option. There is a way to do it, and at the very end I will show you that video, but that is more a static way. So what I'm going to do here is a more dynamic way, and it will understand automatically our grid border. To do this, we're going to use or create a plugin. Scroll down here at the bottom, and you can see here in the options, I'm going to activate a plugin. So I'm going to put in here a comma. I'll type in here plugins. And then here we can give the plugin a name. And this name will be the constant or variable that we're going to use. In this case, I'll just say chart area border. That's probably the most descriptive one because what I really want to do here is to create a border around the chart area. So I'm going to copy this and then here I'm going to create a specific constant. Well, we can call this our chart area border plugin block. And then here we're going to say constant chart area border equal. And then here we'll say ID chart area border. So I make sure that these, this, and this are consistent. That is uh, better and easier for later on. So now, semicolon here, put a comma there, and then enter. And then what I want to do here now is I want to start to draw basically the timing for the, uh, the drawing of the line. So I'm going to say here, this will be drawn after the data sets has been drawn. So data set draw. So after the data set, we will draw the border lines. And then here, I'm going to say three parameters, chart, arcs for argument, and options. The options will be essential together with this. That will be later on important. But this one here, the chart, is basically starting to draw in the canvas. But for that, we need to use what we call object destructuring. Because this chart is an object, and what I want to do now is I want to break it out into specific keywords so that we can use those keywords instead of having a whole uh, object namespace. So what we're going to do here is the following. Oh, make sure you have that chart there. Then we're going to say a constant. And then we say here constant and then we put in here curly braces and then we say chart. So this is here what we call a object destructuring. So what I'm going to do is here is I'm going to say here CTX and later on I will explain what that really does. So CTX, and there's a comma, we say your chart area. And the chart area specifically refers to basically the drawing part of the chart. So that's not the canvas, but within the canvas, there's this basically this square. You could almost say that this is a separate div inside a canvas. And that's what we want to target. Because I want to make a, a borderline around here. So that we can get this aligned and that aligned. So what I'm going to do here. I will say a top, bottom, left, right, and finally I want to have the width and the height. And the top is basically the line here top, and then left is this line, bottom this line right here, and the width would be the measurement in pixels from left to right, from the starting point here to here, and height is the starting point from this to this. Alright? So now we have this here, and then we're very close to completion here. What I want to do here now is ctx.save. And then, first of all, the ctx is basically referring to draw something in the canvas. Which canvas? Well, this canvas here, my chart with this ID here. And then, 
chart area basically with the object destructuring instead of saying chart dot chart area dot top for example as a value now we can just say top equals this basically top is already a reference to that so this will save us some time and you will see now why because what we need to do now is we need to grab the coordinates for the x and y and start to draw those lines so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to say a color I'm going to say a CTX I say create a line we're going to say a fill style fill style refers to drawing a or at least give it a color so what will be the color in this case I'll just grab here a nice color uh, let's say this red fancy color here put in there enter and I'm going to say here now CTX and then we're going to draw the border box so to call this we will say here stroke and stroke means for a line so canvas just think about canvas as a painting that's what the canvas is and then when you have a brush and you want to make a line with your brush we call it a brush stroke so that is the explanation why they're calling it here stroke as well because it's a brush stroke making a line with your paintbrush so we have this here and then we say here in the shape of a rectangle and then in here we're going to put in the coordinates and here the coordinates will be the starting point basically on the left side so the x left and then we have the y top and then we have here the x you can say the right or the x width the width on the x side and then you have the y height and if you really look carefully you probably figured out that this height here would be the height of this and then here the width is this width here already because it already measures our width so this is the reason why we have this here now we don't have to put a whole length of code of chart area dot width dot height dot left and etc etc so if I do this now and I save this and then what I want, what I want to do here is CTX dot restore we want to reset all the restore there we are restore and restore basically mean reset all the settings we have here so it must be removed because maybe we're still drawing something else so we want to avoid the that it will grab any of these values with us so if i refresh here now all right so we have this here and i was expecting a drawing so let's see here uh what we're missing here so we have this we have the ctx then we have here the restore all right fill style did I activate that chart area border? Chart area border there. All right, save this again one more time, refresh. All right, just let me check. So let me explain what is the issue here. So I just realized it quickly, it's, it's, it makes sense of course. So we have here these curly braces. Remember, it is an object destructuring. But of course here, we're going deeper into the object. And without my, uh, I guess I didn't pay attention here, I need to put in here, of course, a curly braces. And here as well. Why? Because this, is related to the chart area while these two are just together so just to give you a visual basically what we're saying here is this chart and then dot and then we say here ctx but you also have another one that says chart dot chart area all right and then here of course dot top so this is like another layer that's why we have to pinpoint this another layer here while well, these two are not equal level so when i forgot this I basically created them on the same level, assuming that chart's looking for chart.top, which of course is not the case. Save that, refresh, and there we are. All right, so you can see here something, I'm not really 100% satisfied. This line here is somehow being clipped off a little bit. So what I'm going to do here, I do minus one pixel here, and then you will see that the line here will be shown nicely. So let's do here, on the width, minus one pixel. And there we are. So this is basically how we can play around. If you might say, well, hold on, I don't want to put a border here and here. I only want to put it on this part or here up. All right, so let's do that one. So instead of everything that we have here, we can just focus on basically on this point here. So to do this, our starting point and ending point is basically here to here. Because what we did here was on the left. But then I don't want to say left, I want to say right. So let's say here, um, that we should be on the right. In this case, we need to be on the right here. And then the width will be equal to zero because there should be no movement in width, only in height. If I save this, we should make a long line here. Refresh, 
there we are all right and then i just say here position it minus one let's see if this will work there you are so that's one of them and if you say well hold on what about your thing on the top let's do that one as well so we have that all together and then finally we'll give it maybe a nice unique color in the options so we have this now i'm going to copy this and then what i will say well what we could do here is we can remove this and the reason why, why we are allowed to remove this now because here we have it already pre-filled and we didn't restore if you restore we reset all values at least the values of this here definitely so that would be one of the things that we could do so if you would have here color and here a different color then you have to restore them so to undo the previous save color but now we want to have the same color so this and this is fine so we're going to keep that one here so we have this right minus one top all right so we have this and then what i want to do here is the following uh we are now where are we going to start we are, well we want to start here at the left all our and we want to move to the right but or it's only on a horizontal level on a vertical level we're not moving so we're going to say here left and then here we say right, and the top we won't be moving at all. Uh, it was right, but I guess it should be the width, sorry. And then here height will be zero. So if I save this, refresh. All right, so I guess we need to push it a little bit down, sorry, which is the uh, top area, which makes sense. Of course, it need to start here at the top. So we need to push down maybe about 20 pixels. So I just say here save that refresh and there you are so now we have on these two sides a line then here this is basically the borderline on the scale and then we're done here and we have this fully operational what i want to do now is just final item is to give this color here in the options that we have so what i want to do here now and then you understand why we use the id here i'm going to copy this id in the options so pay attention here the scales and say comma and then we say here plugins and then here in the plugins, we're going to put in the object called the chart area border, which is the ID name here. And then in here, we could say uh, border color, border color equal. And then here we could say, let's make this green. When I do this, this here must be reference to that here. To do that, that's why we have here the options. We say options dot... And then we're going to grab here the border color. So why does this work? Well, the options is the reference to this here. And of course, we are with this ID, so it will know in the options to search for an ID name or basically an object of chart area border. That's why we have these. So these two are very closely related to each other. And then, of course, so that's why we have this here. So we don't have to say here because you might say, well, why is it not like this? Well, because of the ID name here. But he pre indicated it. He indicated it in advance. So now if I save this, refresh. All right, so we have that one uh, border color. Uh, surprisingly, it don't, doesn't work. Fill style options dot border color. So let me double check. All right, so after I check it, it makes sense. So why is fill style not working? Uh, it works if you indicate here, but for, but of course it should not be the way. And the reason why is that this is a stroke; it's not a fill rack. So if it's a fill rack, it should be fine. But this is a stroke rack, so it should be a stroke style, meaning the line uh, color. So sorry about that. If I save this now and then I refresh, you can see it now it works nicely. Just to make sure it works, let's put this purple. Save that, and there you are. You see it's slightly purplish. Beautiful. And that's basically the way you can put in here these lines and play around with the chart area coordinates. So if you like this video and maybe you want to learn even more, I have another video about here. It's about how to change the color of one grid line in Chart.js, which is similar to this, except this is with grid lines and this is slightly more static.